the way I look at it is that I feel that the traditional pure play open source players have started to move away from that sort of ideal. I'm not going to name names, but they have moved towards a model where they have more opinionated approaches, where they are um, trying to force customers down a certain road and we want to go the other way. We want to go to 100% open source. We want to be giving enterprise customers as many options as they can. We want to have unopinionated stacks. Hi, this is your Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR. Let's talk today. We have with us once again, Randy Bias, VP of Open Source Strategy and Technology at Mirantis. Randy, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here, as usual. Today, we are going to talk about Rock Moon, a new project from Mirantis. I'm curious, what is uh, this project all about and what is the story behind the name as well? So, Rock Moon is not a new project per se. It is a piece of technology that was inside our Mirantis OpenStack on Kubernetes product that was used to do all the lifecycle management of OpenStack. So we were the first to basically take the OpenStack control plane and data plane, put it on top of Kubernetes way back in the day, almost five years ago now. Uh, and that was inside of Mosk. Um, and we realized, you know, as I said, you know, one of the times that we had previous conversation, you know, we're doubling down on open source. And so this is us taking the key piece of technology that was in Mosk that was not open source, open sourcing it, giving it to the community so that they can use it um, and get the value from it. And, um, you know, we're just really excited to share it with people because we've been using it. It's battle hardened. It's running some of the largest OpenStack clusters in the world for um, companies that I can't name, but we're talking about 5,000 plus hypervisors. So really, really large deployments. And um, the origin is uh, from something called a, a raccoon. It's an actual thing. You can look it up on Wikipedia, but it was a combination of a rocket and a balloon that was used uh, for... Uh, uh, different purposes in the past. Excellent. Thanks for sharing the history and story. Uh, what was the reason where you felt that it will bring up some value to the open source community in general? Of course, as you and I discussed earlier, that Mirantis is going to be very, very aggressive when it comes to open source. But let's just talk about this piece of technology where you see that it is so much valuable for the whole ecosystem that it should be open source for the community to use. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, you know my history. I, I built one of the first OpenStack-based uh, products at my old company um, before I joined Mirantis. And uh, one of the things that I found very interesting was that we would get OpenStack deployed and OpenStack would not be upgraded for a long time, if ever, in some cases. And what, what we did with Mosk was we basically came up with a mechanism whereby we could continue to update our OpenStack deployments on a regular basis. And the key behind that was Raccoon, which was used to do the lifecycle management. So we had a clean way of basically bringing new capacity in, upgrading components one at a time, bringing them back into production, taking the old components out, and basically able to do live upgrades of entire uh, OpenStack uh, deployments from the control plane down to the data plane with no impact to the customers. And so what that means is pretty much all of the Mirantis customers that are running OpenStack are running, you know, if not the latest version, you know, within two to three releases of the latest version of OpenStack. And you just don't see that very often. So we wanted to make sure everybody had access to the technology that we use to basically manage the life cycle of OpenStack so that everybody could use it. Can you talk about some of the key features of Raccoon? It's a native, what's called a Kubernetes controller. Um, so it's an OpenStack, it's a Kubernetes controller. It's used to maintain OpenStack. Uh, we use it for the control plane. So all the components like Nova, Neutron, all the different OpenStack services run on top of Kubernetes. They're designed for scale out. So you can manage them using all the normal Kubernetes idioms, uh, you know, architects, uh, architectures, objects, all those things. Um, that also means that it's easy to live migrate them, scale them horizontally, et cetera. Uh, but in addition, we also use it for the data plane. So it's managing things like uh, the components on each of the hypervisor nodes, which makes it easy to upgrade them, makes it easy to roll it back in case we've got any problems. And essentially, it gives us a common substrate across the entire OpenStack deployment that is Kubernetes. 
And that's part of what led to us being able to be successful, all those learnings that we did from that on building our own uh, Kubernetes enterprise, uh, enterprise version of Kubernetes, which is MKE, um, and then just generally led to some of the things that uh, you might see us announcing in the upcoming days where we're taking those Kubernetes chops and taking them to the next level. And can you also talk about who is going to benefit from Raccoon? The first thing and, and you know, a big driving force for us to open source this component was to assure our customers that we're on Mosk, our customer base, that all of the pieces of Mosk were 100% open source. As we talked about in previous times when you had me on, you know, we had made this, you know, uh, in, we had made this intention public to double down on being a 100% open source company. This was a piece that we had not open sourced. So now that it's available, you know, it's another sort of point in, in proving that um, we are uh, committed to 100% pure play open source. We don't want customers to have lock-in. We want them to be able to, to basically own their own future. So that, that's a big piece. That's a big driver. Second is that, you know, we continue to see people struggling with running open OpenStack in production. Uh, you know, as I said, we're running some of the largest deployments globally. And it's just interesting that, what are we in, 10, 10 years in now, people are still struggling with OpenStack. And so we just wanted to make it easier for everybody to be able to run OpenStack at scale, to be able to upgrade it easily, to be able to do that full lifecycle management, um, to have that... I mean, Kubernetes is proven in production to run applications at scale. And when you take that and you basically say OpenStack is just another application that runs on top of it, you know, the magic can happen. When we open source something, you know, of course, it allows folks to use it as and when they want to use it. But sometimes there are a lot of folks, they do want commercial support behind some of these projects. So can you also talk about what kind of commercial support we can expect from Mirantis when it comes to Raccoon? Raccoon is not meant to be sort of a standalone product. It is an open source project. We make that distinction at Mirantis between our projects, which are open source, and our products, which are a rolled up set of open source projects that have then been enterprise hardened, they've been tested, they've been validated. Um, we've got mechanisms by which we pro, uh, guarantee a secure software supply chain. You know, we put all the pieces together, including support and services, so they can be consumed by an enterprise, right? I mean, any enterprise could go out and sort of make the decision, oh, we're 100% open source, we're only going to use open source, um, but then they take on all of the pieces that come with that, right? Having to support their own open source, build their own internal teams to, to do that work, to deal with any of the bug fixes, the security hot fixes, you know, testing new releases, um, in a, doing the integration, you know, um, all of those pieces that are, are really too much. So most enterprises want to consume open source and sort of like, um, you know, sort of a way that is more easy for an enterprise to basically bring it in-house. And so the way that you would do that with Raccoon when it comes to uh, Mirantis is you would go with Mosk, which is our Mirantis OpenStack on Kubernetes uh, product, and that has Raccoon integrated into it. So Raccoon is just really us taking the piece, one of the key pieces that we never did open source, open sourcing it, letting everybody else have it. So it it's... It's literally goodwill. <laughs> and that leads to another question is that how should folks look at Mirantis today? I do remember, you know, uh, sitting down in Vancouver, you know, the OpenStack, you know, when it was still called OpenStack Foundation. Uh, and you, uh, Mirantis used to be a pure play uh, OpenStack player. Now it is, you know, uh, I say, you know, Mirantis goes where the customer go. And of course, everybody is on the Kubernetes bandwagon these days. How should uh, not only the, the, the players, uh, even your competitors, but how should the whole ecosystem look at Mirantis as a player today in the open source space? The way I look at it is that I feel that the traditional pure play open source players have started to move away from that sort of ideal. I'm not going to name names. But they have moved towards a model where they have more opinionated approaches, where they are um, trying to force customers down a certain road 
And we want to go the other way. We want to go to 100% open source. We want to be giving enterprise customers as many options as they can. We want to have unopinionated stacks. We want to come in and allow customers to use us to put together the building blocks that they need that are based on open source to, you know, get to the next generation. And we see a lot happening there in terms of people trying to figure out how to, how to deploy new AI powered applications, which are essentially the evolution of cloud native applications. And they need more help, not less. They need less constraints. They need the ability to make, to have as much choice as possible and to you know move horizontally between vendors if they need to as well. And so we'd rather enable all that rather than try to you know basically force them down a path that we think is best for them. When we open source any piece of our own technology, for a lot of folks, it may seem like, hey, you are kind of losing control over that technology. Sometimes folks put technology into a neutral foundation also. Then people like, hey, you have lost total control. Now the, the whole community is controlling it. Can you talk about what benefit open sourcing your own technology brings to company like Brantis so that other folks can also like look at that model? So that's a great question. So First of all, when we started looking at um, when I when I joined up when with Marantis, when we started looking at, you know, uh, where we would start in terms of some of the pieces that had not been open sourced in the past, you know, we wanted to identify the high value pieces first. High value to us, high value to our customers, high value to the community. That's why we, we started with Raccoon. We talked to the Open the Open Infra Foundation. We told them we were going to do this. We said, you know, would there be interest in basically putting it under the Open Infra Foundation umbrella? They said, yes, there might be. And so that's an ongoing conversation. But we didn't want to um, slow down. We didn't want to wait until that was all figured out. So we decided, hey, we'll get it out there. We'll get it open source. We'll see if it resonates with people, if they start using it. Um, you know, and then if it does, then it provides more validation that this is something that should go under open infra. So that's an ongoing discussion with those folks. Um, and we think that kind of the proof is in the pudding, right? So, you know, we're trying to basically see if it flies, right? So we're running it up a flagpole, see if anybody salutes. Here's Raccoon. It can make your life easier when you're running OpenStack in production and at scale, Take it for a test drive, see if you like it, you know, contribute. Let's work on it together. Rene, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about this open source project from Mirantis. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Swap.